You're listening to Radioactive on 91.3 FM CJTR. I'm beyond excited to be joined by Lonnie Eagleton. How are you doing, Lonnie? Hey, what's up, Victoria? I'm good. Thanks for having me. So the last time I had interviewed you, um, we had a lot to talk about, but now we got even more to talk about. You guys just uh, announced that you'll be releasing your newest album, The Phantom Tomorrow, on June 4th. Uh, just how excited are you to be uh, releasing this record? Yeah, uh, very excited. You know, it's always cool when you have a, a full album to release of new material. Really looking forward to it. Um, the response from the first two singles that we've put out so far have been great. Uh, we put out uh, Scarlet Cross towards the end of 2020, and then we just put out Fields of Bone uh, a couple days ago, which is the second single off the record. And then, uh, yeah, up next, coming out June 4th, is the rest of the material, so the record in its entirety. And, yeah, really excited. You know, like I said, the response towards the first two singles has been uh, overwhelmingly positive, which makes us feel good. So the rest of the record is really just a continuation of those first two songs. So, you know, if the response from the first two is any telling, I'm sure the fans are going to be just as excited about uh, the rest of the record once we get that out in June. Right. And I... uh I heard from most of you guys in the band that this is like the most fun that you guys have had writing new music. Uh, what was the process like for making this album for you? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's been great. We're all really excited about everything that's going on uh, from the music to everything down from like the music video to the press photos to the release of this. Uh, you know, there's like a comic book aspect coming out. Everything uh, definitely excites us and we've all been having a great time with it. Uh, you know, for me, the process was a lot of, uh, traveling between Vancouver and LA because I spend most of my time in Vancouver, but I work with the band in LA. So I go there for, you know, months at a time to work on this record. So for me, it was, uh, you know, a lot of traveling and making sure I'm available, uh, for bass parts and writing and all that stuff when I need to be. But yeah, the, to speak with the writing process of the band, I think for the most part, it usually just comes off of a guitar riff, and that's usually where the song stems from. You know, somebody will bring in a riff, we'll load that up and do a session, build some drums around it, everyone kind of inputs, uh, you know, whatever they're feeling musically. And then oftentimes, that's how it works. And then once an instrumental track is put together in some sort of basic form, um, then Andy will take a mix of the instrumental track that we've all created together and he'll go out and kind of work on lyrics usually by himself you know he likes to have a have a crack at the lyrics and he's really he's really the one who comes up with most of the if not all of the the concepts for the records uh, lyrically and the message behind the songs and stuff so he usually goes out writes some lyrics for that brings them in sorry brings them in maybe we'll do some changes uh, you know a word or two here or there but for the most part that's basically the process, and what you hear on the records is pretty much uh, coming from that sort of workflow. Right, and out of all the songs that you guys had recorded, what was your favorite that you had recorded? Um, so since the album isn't officially released yet, yet I can't really name song titles, you know, because I don't want to give anything away. Yeah. Um, but I'll, So I guess I can't really fully answer the question at this point in time since we're recording this before the release of the full album, but I'll just speak to the excitement of Scarlet Cross, uh, given that it was the first song that came out on the record. And also, uh, you know, some people might not know this, it was actually the first song that was written for the record. You know, the first time that we all got into a room to write a song for this new record, that was Scarlet Cross was the result of that, the very first session. And just coincidentally, coincidentally, it ended up being the first single and the title track on the record. So that's kind of cool. And it was really exciting putting that out. So, yeah, you know, that's definitely one of my favorite songs on the record. And it always has a special place just because it was, you know, like I said, the first writing session sparked that song. Right, and staying on the topic of Scarlet Cross, that music video is super cool, and you guys had new costumes coming into it. How much fun was it to make that video? Yeah, the the video for Scarlet Cross was was a blast. Um, 
like any music video is, it's always fun being in a music video and and having a having a visual representation of of the song, right? Because really, music as an art form is strictly strictly auditory. You know, you never you don't see anything unless the music allows you to imagine stuff. But it's cool when we can kind of create our own visuals behind the songs. And given that this is a concept record too, there's a storyline behind the songs and we have characters and there's, uh, you know, actors who are portraying those characters in the Scarlet Cross video. And I think it turned out really cool. You know, we were all super happy with it. And then, uh, yeah, the, a continuation of that was Fields of Bone, which was the second song that just came out a few days ago, like I was saying earlier. And you see a lot of those same characters in the Fields of Bone video. And yeah, both music videos were super fun to uh, to film, and I think they turned out great. Yeah, I think they turned out pretty cool too. And in Scarlet Cross and Fields of Bone, uh, what parts were your favorite in each video? Um. So with Scarlet Cross, I, I think I think one of my favorite things was was just just seeing the song come to life on a on a camera screen. Yeah, you know, it, I think it's. It comes down to being a part of the process of being in the room while the song was written and hearing it just be created out of nothing. And then, you know, months later seeing, oh, wow, like here we are on set doing a music video for this. And then here we are doing eventually like doing interviews to represent the song and help promote it and stuff like that. And just kind of kind of seeing the baby grow, uh, you know, into an adult <laughs> to uh speak metaphorically <laughs> it's it's just cool to see the entire process unfold but yeah both both videos had a lot had a lot of cool things um yeah the fields of bone video especially was was very creepy to film um like we, we filmed <laughs> it in this this movie studio i guess it was and i i swear they film like horror movies in there often because it was just such a creepy vibe uh, i mean you can kind of see it in the in the fields of bone video there's like skulls yeah. around us and you know i mean it just kind of plays into that horror horror visual representation that a, a lot of people enjoy so yeah i was kind of getting freaked out there, <laughs> there was one time where i got <laughs> lost in the set i was trying to find my way oh, back man. upstairs because we were filming it in basically like a dungeon of this building and that's where that's where the set was. And I was trying to get back upstairs. I got lost. It was really dark. And uh, I kind of <laughs> got scared for a bit. But <laughs> yeah, the video turned out really cool. And <laughs> what, what was also super cool, yeah. uh, just say one more thing. What was also super cool about the Fields of Bone video was that uh, our lead singer, Andy Beersack, directed the video. So he was really the one, you know, making those decisions of like where the camera angles should be and, you know, giving pointers to the, the cast and everything. And he did a great job, and uh, that was actually his first time directing a music video. And while he's always really involved in every aspect of the band, it was his first time kind of being the official director of the video, and I think he did a great job. Yeah, I think both those videos turned out super, super cool. Thank you. Appreciate that. So right after Scarlet Cross came out in November, you guys had done an Alive and Burning show with a live stream. How much fun was it to do this stream since you guys can't really tour or do anything like that? Yeah, so yeah, we did a live concert experience. We've done a few of them, or a couple of them now at this point, but yeah, Alive and Burning 2 was the title of, uh, of that one. And, you know, the band had done one called just Regular Alive and Burning a couple of years back few years ago when would that have been 2015 or 2015 i think yeah 2015 sounds about right so this alive and burning 2 was the follow-up as the name suggests <laughs> and uh yeah it was cool um yeah it was fun you know um it, it, like like any concert it was it was fun and it, it felt like we were kind of back on tour for a moment you know yeah and uh, probably one of the funnest parts too was th we did th this uh, virtual VIP experience where we it, it would would have been like any sort of VIP but we did it uh, remotely through video chat so you know fans could sign up for a virtual VIP experience where they would get to have a, a private video chat with us as a band and we would just you know hear stories of the way the band has 
you know, influenced people in a positive way and helped them through some of life's difficulties, uh, you know, which we, we feel so honored to be able to assist people with, with things like that through our music. And, uh, yeah, anyways, just to say that the virtual VIP thing was great. Uh, you know, we love being able to connect with the fans in that way. And since we haven't been able to tour recently, that really helped us to, you know, kind of keep the, the, that close connection that we have with our fans uh, to some extent. But, yeah, the goal is definitely to, to take these songs on the road as soon as the global pandemic lifts that we're in right now. Right. And when you played this live stream show, did it feel weird at all to not have anyone really there watching? Uh, not, not really. You know, we, we've all done a bunch of, bunch of kind of on camera stuff, uh, whether it's like television promotional performances or, or even like filming a music video where there isn't really an audience there anyways. So it, 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 we're all pretty used to being in front of cameras and performing for camera lenses, so to speak. So I think we were, we all felt, you know, we all kind of knew what we were getting into. But yeah, that, I mean, that being said, it you, the way I think of it is just when I'm looking into the lens, there's all of our fans are on the other side of that lens. So you're still playing for them, right. even though they're not physically in the room with you. Right. And uh, at that live stream show, what was your favorite song that you played? Um, I, I guess I, I just got to go back to Scarlet Cross because in that show, that was our first time ever playing Scarlet Cross live. To, in right. any capacity so that's always exciting when it's the first time a song is being performed live and it was the first song of the show too so you know that's always exciting too they're all fun to play though uh yeah mm -hmm. but I, I guess i choose, choose scarlet cross yeah and that show was a show of fan favorites but uh what are some of your favorite black Veil bride songs in general um I mean, yeah, I love all the fan favorites, you know, you, you can't really go wrong with the hits. Right. I love those too. I, I guess to dive into some yeah. deeper cuts, um, one that always comes to mind is Devil's Choir, which isn't really performed live much, but I, I, I really like Devil's Choir. I, I always enjoy the ones with like the, the happy choruses, like the uplifting uh, major right. tonalities, the Devil's Choir. Nobody's Hero would be another example like that. Uh, yeah, they're all good though. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah, I agree with you there. Um, and what's the most challenging Black Veil Bride song to play on guitar or on uh, bass? Oh yeah. I got my answer ready. People ask me this all the time. <laughs> it, it's Coffin. Yeah. It's, I think it's the band's heaviest song. Sa yeah. Saints of the Blood's pretty heavy too. But yeah, I think Co Coffin is the hardest. I really have to focus when I'm playing that one. It's, it's fast and it's like it's meant to be it's meant to be played on guitar you know it, it's hard to play it on bass with the thicker yeah. strings and the wider frets it it's tough it's a lot of big stretching with the hands and i really have to focus when i'm playing that one <laughs> yeah one one i was thinking of was uh the legacy that one's a little fast too but yeah probably not yeah that one's that's pretty fast oh that's true yeah i mean certainly none of them are easy you know, they're no, all, that's for they're sure. all, uh, they're metal, right? Metal songs are tough. It's like, um, I don't know. Yeah. It's like, you can learn like a Justin Bieber song in like three seconds, but then you, you go to learn a, a metal <laughs> song and it's like, it's a, it's a job for sure because of the, oh, the rhythms and you. the riffs and yeah, it takes <laughs> time, but that's what's so rewarding about it. Yeah. And uh, moving away from just Black Veil stuff for a bit, uh, you have your own YouTube channel. And I just want to know kind of what keeps you dedicated to doing your videos, because I know for a fact that it's not easy um, always coming up with ideas for videos or working on videos. Yeah, it uh, it's, it's fun. Yeah, I've been kind of running my YouTube channel uh, 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 consistently, I guess, for about a year now. And it, it is a lot of work, like you're saying. Um. And I mean, it's all done on top of like the regular work that I do, you know, because even before I started YouTube, I still had a full schedule and I, you know, I work like 10 hours a day, every day on stuff and all that doesn't go away, right? YouTube's done on top of that. And, you know, so it it, it is a full plate. Really, the answer is just sleep less and that's how you get it all done. <laughs> 
I mean, I, I'm i often up till, not often, but, you know, once or twice a week, I'm up till, like, three in the morning, like, oh trying to, God. like, meet deadlines. Like, I'll, I'll go to bed with my wife, and then when she falls asleep, I'll, like, you know, I could go to bed with her just to be a loving <laughs> husband. Then I'll, you know, get back up and work till like 3 a.m. Uh, oh. I mean, this is, these are the kind of things you got to do. It's if you want to get everything done, you know. Um, right. But anyways, I don't want to seem like I'm complaining here. I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kind of letting you know what goes on behind the scenes. But no, I, I love yeah. doing, uh, I love doing my, my channel. And I, I feel like it's, it's a good thing I got going on there, you know, just, we got a really positive community with everyone kind of supports each other. And I like my entire comment sec comment sections on my videos are all, you know, often like hundred percent positive with people just sharing, sharing wonderful stories with me or, uh, you know, just saying how much they like the music. And I, I love that. And, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, it is a lot of work to, edit the videos on a, on a weekly basis, but I enjoy every second of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, even if I do feel a little tired sometimes, the second I publish a video and I see, I see people uh, responding to it so kindly, it, it makes it all worth it. Yeah. And, uh, out of all the videos that you're, do that you've done, what's your favorite? And it can't be a playthrough. <laughs> um, what's my favorite? I, I, you know, I try to keep the variety pretty vast, um, like anywhere from like interviews to guitar lessons to, uh, you know, silly stuff like taking quizzes and all that kind of stuff. I la actually lately I've been doing a, a series where I analyze songs, so I'll kind of yeah. break down like what makes up a song that you know like I'll take a look at what the drums are doing or what you know what the vocals are doing or like how how the guitar is being played what what's the theory behind the guitar solo kind of analyze it and break it down section by section like that and really the goal is for people to hear the songs in a new way that they love you know you can hear a song a million times but maybe you never notice that one little guitar part in the background of the chorus there and I feel like it's cool to point that kind of thing out to people who might have missed it and allow their ears to open up to to a new way of listening to songs so that's kind of what i've been doing in my uh, analysis series lately so I, i've been enjoying those yeah those are cool and like even yeah i think it was your perfect weapon one like i would never have thought that there was an organ in there was it before the chorus i think it was or yeah wherever it was in the song yeah it's it's right during the chorus actually yeah there's a there's an organ in in perfect weapon and, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just love, uh, you know, kind of finding those hidden gems within the tracks and it's, uh, it's neat. The production that goes into a song. <laughs> yeah. And I gotta say, I also like the one with, a uh, CC beatboxing. That one was funny too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I have a good time, good time putting those together. That CC beatboxing one took a long time to do. It was so funny, though. See, the thing is, I've been really... <laughs> I know it was. I, I've been wanting to do another beatboxing one so bad, but that first <laughs> one just took so much out of me. Like, yeah. I, I, I can't... I don't even want to admit how many hours that took me to do. Like, So <laughs> I, I really want to make another beatboxing one, and I plan on doing another one soon, but I just got to be ready for it, because, yeah, it really took a lot out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh out of all your playthrough videos that you've done which one's your favorite uh they're all they all can't have their own thing right like with uh when i was doing the playthroughs for research these wounds i was doing them in front of a white backdrop so it was kind of that like you know never-ending background sort of like where is he sort of thing and and that was fun Lately, I've been doing, though, more on-location filming. Like, for Scarlet Cross, I went out into this this field in the middle of the night. And there was, like, high-rise buildings behind me, and I thought that, that was a pretty cool look. Whereas uh, the one I just put up for Fields of Bone, I was in uh, a cemetery, actually, in uh, Los Angeles. And there's, like, palm trees behind me and stuff like that. So... I don't know. I guess to answer your question, I'll, I'll just choose my most recent one for Fields of Bone. 
I, I like palm trees, so it's cool how I got to feature <laughs> those in the video. <laughs> Yeah, I got to say probably my favorite was the Scarlet Cross one, just because it was like an on-location one. And uh, Sweet Blast Me, that's just a cool song, though. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, you know, every video I make has its own kind of personality. It's hard to choose one over the others. But, no, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. So that's all the questions I got for you today, Lonnie. All right, Victoria. Well, thanks so much for having me. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate you checking out the the new music video and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the release of the full record Phantom Tomorrow coming out June 4th. Yeah. Can't wait to check it out. Definitely. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Victoria.